Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, part three of our Apache attack helicopter build. Well, on last week's show, we finished up by working on the missiles, I believe, but we weren't quite done. And that is where we're going to start today by shaping and gluing in place the fins on the missiles that we turn. So in order to make the fins and get them installed, I made a small marking template out of MDF, just marking the angle that I need to sand off of each corner. I then use that template to mark where I need to sand and then using a small belt or disc sander, I can then shape each piece and then glue it into our rocket or our missile rather. And now there's not much more to do with those other than to take your time and glue them into the missile racks that we made in last week's show. We're now going to go on to making the wheels uh, for the front end of the Apache. And we have some half inch walnut to make them from. And the first step I'm going to do is drill a 5 8 diameter hole, 5 30 seconds of an inch deep. I'm going to be making some extra blanks here uh, just in case I mess one of them up, which can happen when you're making wheels. Once you get that done, we have the fence and the stop blocks set so that we can have repeatability. And as long as we don't move them, we should be fine because now we need to drill a 3 8 diameter through hole in this piece of walnut as well. Well, the final dimension of these wheels are going to be 7 eighths of an inch. So just to give us some wiggle room, I'm going to mark like an inch and a quarter diameter circle just roughly around this uh, around all of our holes centering as best we can and then I'm going to take it over to the scroll saw and just cut these out roughly and with the wheel between centers here um, I'm just going to turn it down to its final dimension of seven eighths and then we'll round off the sides of our tire and well we'll make two of them Well, you may be wondering what kind of an arbor I use to turn this with. And this is a shop made armor, arbor rather, which is nothing more than a 3 8 diameter bolt. That bolt has had the head cut off of it and the shank is actually used to hold my pieces. I've center punched dead center here for a live center on the tailstock and it does a rather nice job of functioning as an arbor when you're turning small little pieces like this. Well, for the rest of the pieces of the wheels, it's really nothing special. It's just some 3 16 inch diameter dowels uh, that are cut to the measurements on the plans. There's a couple pieces being the hubs, or I guess they call them the rims. It's just made out of some quarter inch thick material. You drill the 5 16 hole for the axle pin and use a scroll saw to cut the rest. Um, it's really not that difficult and as long as you take your time, you end up with some pretty nice looking assembled wheels. Well, I was going to do the rear wheel, but I decided I was going to move on to the tail rotor instead. Now, it's not a difficult piece to make, but you do need to follow a certain sequence. Working from a larger board is always safer. So the first thing that I did here was cut the rabbit that's required to get the rotor base to fit around the tail body. Once I got that rabbit cut, I could use the edge of the rabbit uh, to guide me in attaching my pattern and then drill the hole that will later accept the rotor pin. You want to get all the processes done first before you turn this thing into something too small to work with. 
Once the hole is drilled, I just take it over to the scroll saw and cut out the main body shape. Any other shaping can be done by hand after that. Once that is done, of course, we need to cut the rotor blades and for that I use the small parts jig to cut each blade section and then take it to the scroll saw to finish its final shaping. Making the rotor base spacer and the rotor blade hub is nothing more than cutting lengths of dowel using the small parts jig and then drilling out the very center of each one to get your perfect piece. You are only using pieces of dowel that are one quarter inch long and one half an inch long. So if you are not satisfied that the hole is completely centered, throw it away and get another one and drill that. Once that's done, you need to make the rotor blade supports. These pieces, guys, are way too small to be able to cut on any kind of power tool. I don't feel secure with that, so I use a razor saw and a small little miter box and cut each one individually using a stop block in that uh, miter box, and that makes things just so much easier. Then it's just a matter of gluing it together and uh, putting it in place on the tail body. And as long as you take your time and clean up your squeeze out and just be careful with your measuring and your sanding, you should end up with something that looks like this. I've also put the tail fin on and all it is is a matter of careful sanding for that to contour it. And you should have a working rear rotor at this point in time. So that's all there is for that piece. But just to make the rear rotor and the tail flap, uh, that was almost four and a half hours. So don't think it's going to be a, a, a quick process. Well, every build has one of those pieces that you just dread to make. And uh, this build is no different. For this one, it's the turbo shaft engine. Guys, I have no idea how to make this piece and I've been kind of mulling it over in my head for about three weeks ever since I started this build. And the only way I can see to do it is in sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a larger piece of poplar. Well, this is the piece that I'm referring to, and you can see there are many different aspects to it, many different layers, and I just don't see where this could be done safely in one piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble it in layers. The middle layer right here being the core, and then this layer here that represents these ribs here that will be our next layer as well then our outside skin right here on both sides will be our final layer so what I've done is I've taken a piece of stock I've run it through the table saw and I've measured the exact measurement or the kerf of my table saw blade and in my instance it's 764 so then I've taken the measurements of each one of these sections here and I came up with 1 16th of an inch for the outside skin, 3 32nd of an inch for the next layer, 11 16ths for the next piece, and then of course it repeats, 3 32nds here and then 1 16th on the outer edge. So this is where it gets a little confusing if you're not already confused, because I sure as heck am. In between each one of these layers, I have to cut these pieces apart. I don't want to make it from separate stock. I want to make it all from one piece so that when it all gets glued together, as long as I pay attention to how the pieces come apart and how they go back together, it will be as seamless of a joint and as seamless of a piece as what I can get. So what I need to do is add 1 16th of the outer layer plus now a saw curve, 7 64 Then the next layer of 3 32nds and then a saw curve of 7 64 Then the core, 11 16th saw curve, etc. You, you get the idea and that will give us the final width 
of our piece, which in this case ends up to be one and seven sixteenths of an inch wide. That is what we're gonna start with. It'll be one and a quarter inches tall. It will be uh, one and seven, seven sixteenths of an inch wide and whatever length we need. In this case, we'll need about seven or eight inches. So let's start with our piece of stock and then head over to the table saw. Well, we have our stock cut to its dimensions that we need. We've squared it up to make sure that it's 100% square. And now what we have to do is mark on each side of the 1 and 7 16 width. We have to mark a uh, mark at 1 16 of an inch on each side. You now want to set your fence so that that mark ends up on the outside of your blade so that when you run this through, you will end up with your 1 16th inch strip on the outside of your blade, and that will be your first layer. Now, don't run this through all in one shot. What you want to do is take a little tiny pass, back it out, and then double check your measurement to make sure that it's correct. If it's not, adjust your fence, and then once you're happy that you have 1 16th of an inch, run it through on one side, readjust your fence again, and run it through on the other side. Our next piece will be 3 32 of an inch wide. So in the same way we just did, we're gonna mark 3 32 on each side of our board and just repeat the process. And if you took your time, you should have five pieces that will be the segments or the sections of our um, turbo shaft engine. So let's head over to the bench and we can move on to the next step. Well, I've cut our blanks a little proud of what I need. I've marked one end so that I can identify how these go back together and I've placed a rubber band around each one to keep them together. Remembering that we need to make a left and a right here, I've also made three templates, all cut to the same size as what our blank is so that we can align them properly. And each one will be for the different layers, this one being the outside layer, this one here being the 332nd thick layer, and this one being the core. So it's just a matter at this point of carefully marking out the pieces, cutting them on the scroll saw, and then bringing them back to the bench. I don't think you need a video of me marking out patterns and cutting on the scroll saw. I'm sure you could figure that part out, but I'll see you when I get the pieces cut, at least on one of them. Well, I'm partway through the process of making one of them, and you can see what we've ended up with here. Now, you can't see the joins in it because I paid such special attention to keeping all of the pieces in the same order that I cut them, which allows the grain to all match up. So what I did here was I cut the center piece first, and then I glued the next layer onto the center piece, marked the side profile, and cut the side profile all at one shot. You end up with a nice clean look, and with a little bit of sanding, we're gonna cut and add our outside layers to it, and then we can move on from there. Well, I was at the point in time where these ones here were getting tiring, so I stopped. That's the best advice I can give you at this point in time, is that if you're getting frustrated with a piece, just stop, because you've come this far. You don't want to destroy it now. This has been a lot of work. So I put those aside, and I ended up making the turbo shaft intakes. Um, it's just a simple piece that was turned on the lathe using that same 3 8 bolt arbor that I made. Uh, I used that as well to make the front wheels on the helicopter. So I just turned these pieces. They're just simple little pieces with a 3 8 dowel in the middle. They're really nothing special. But I can now, that I'm finished that, turn my attention 
back to our turbo shaft engines. Now, truth be told, these four pieces right here, that, my friends, was five and a half hours. And uh, that's why I'm stopping now because there is a lot more to do on these turbo shafts, but um, that will be once I take a break from it, that's all. So in order to route our vent grooves in our turbo shaft engine, it's just a matter of making a simple jig with a simple template and being very careful with your measurements. You want to make sure that you do several test cuts uh, on scrap pieces of wood of the exact same size that you're working with just to make sure is everything is right. It's taken us five and a half hours to get to this point. You don't want to mess it up now. Now, because these vent grooves are so close together, you're going to have to make several passes. And the best advice I could make here is just take your time. Make sure that you're double checking everything before you put a router to this piece. So we'll just give this a light sanding here. And there we go, that's what you're looking for. Just some nice clean grooves for your vent holes. We can get in there and clean up any of the, uh, any of the little fuzzies that are on there. And then we'll just do the exact same process on the other one. Well, now that you have the nerve wracking process of routing those vent grooves, you can cut the piece to its final dimension of three and a quarter inches long. Now there are no dimensions on the drawing for where to place these next holes, um, but you can measure directly off the plans. And you want to drill a 5 8 diameter hole a quarter of an inch deep. You can use a stock block and your fence and then change your bit to a 3 8 bit and using your intake piece as a guide, drill a 3 8 diameter hole deep enough to house that 3 8 dowel on the intake. Well, there's still a little bit of shaping to do. It's nothing special, nothing difficult. We've just used our outer template here. We've cut and shaped the profile that we need and we're just gonna lay it on top of our piece, trace it out, and then take it over to the belt sander and trim it up. Well, there is a detail that you see on the assembly drawing that you don't see on the uh, rest of the drawings, and that is a 1 16th inch groove that's right along the side edge of our turbo shaft engine here in line with our first routed vent groove. So although it's not shown on the plans uh, to make this piece, all you need to do is set up your fence, set up your 1 16th inch router bit, 1 16th of an inch deep, and we'll run it through using the stop block as our guide. Now, once you glue the intakes in place, there's not really much to do other than glue it to the model. Guys, this has been, without a doubt, in all the models that I've made, this particular piece, this one piece, the turbo shaft engine, this has been one of the most challenging pieces I've ever had to make. And it's not that it was difficult, it's just that you had to think about the process the thing with these drawings is that they show the piece to you in its final state. And as long as they do that with no instructions, it's up to the interpretation of the woodworker to figure out how to do it. And it took me a while mulling it over for three weeks until I came up with an idea that I thought would work. And as you can see, the results actually, well, I'm quite happy with them. So I guess that's all that matters is that it pleases the guy that's making the model. Unfortunately though guys, that's all the time that we have for this week on the build. We've covered quite a lot of time and quite a lot of space. There's actually three weeks of filming that went into making this, um, this one episode of the show. So it takes time 
That's all there is to it. No ifs, ands, or buts. You just got to take your time and do it step by step and try to think ahead and plan each process. That's the key here, planning. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to try this for yourself one day. And I also hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.